Alright guys, how's it going? So I generally don't do modelling tutorials, and for good reason. <laughs> but I wanted to say thank you for the 10,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. And I basically wanted to model this. Now I'm a little bit sad, but I can never see me reaching 100,000 subscribers. And you've got to give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> so I'm going to model this today. I'll kind of walk you through the basics of it. Now if you're any good at modelling, or you know a general kind of basics, Probably not the video for you, probably better switching off and watching Joe Rogan or something. So in traditional fashion, I'm going to delete the cube. I'll press Shift and A and I'll add in a plane. And what I'll do here is I'll just scale it on the Y axis and I'll make it kind of look like a frame, something like that. I'll then tab into edit mode, I'll press 3 to select the faces and what I'll do is I'll do a quick inset and I'll just use the inset and I'll just move it in. Now what we can do here is we can actually put offset even off and that'll kind of maybe balance things out but I quite like it on. And that looks like a decent enough picture frame. Now if I was being really pedantic what I would do is I would rip these edges and I would actually extrude these as separate parts but I'm just throwing this up in a render, it's not going to take too much to be honest. And the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to press 2 to select edges and I'm going to hold in Alt and I'm going to do a loop select of this edge. I'm then going to come to extrude or press E on the keyboard and I'm going to extrude this down. So something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm not making this physically accurate to be honest. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press 3 and I'm going to select this middle face and I'm going to extrude this down. Now a tip here, if you go to the front view by pressing 1, press Z on the keyboard, go to wireframe and I can drop this right down. And let's make it the back of the picture frame. Press Z on the keyboard back into solid mode and we have a basic shape. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually bevel this edge. So if I select the bevel tool, press 2, I'll do a loop select on this edge and I'll just quickly bevel it. Now I'm not going to add segments to this, I quite like this kind of look, but what I'll do here is I'll actually loop select the outside edge, I'll do another bevel and I'll actually put segments in this one. So once the dialog box pops up, I'll just do it. Let's just, let's just do four. And it's just enough to tell the render engine to catch the light. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that's me got a pretty much basic photo frame in under five clicks. So the next thing I'll do is I'll press three on the keyboard to select the face and I'll select this face. And what I'll do here is I'll actually press Shift and D to duplicate it. And I'll actually move it up. And that'll act like my glass. Now I'll just move this somewhere around here. So what I can do here is, I can come up to Mesh, I can drop down to Separate, and I can separate by selection. And you can see in the Outliner that it actually creates a new piece of geometry, and I can actually hide this. And this is essentially the glass panel, so we might as well double click here and call it Glass. And we might as well call the plane the frame. And there we go, we have this basic photo frame in under 5 clicks. Pretty easy, dead simple. So I'll hide the glass for the moment, just so we can see what we're doing. So the next thing I'm going to do is import an SVG and I'm going to use that as a YouTube logo. Now as a quick tip, you might not necessarily get an SVG file. Now obviously this is a YouTube logo, there'll be millions, but there's a really nice website and it's called Pick SVG. And all you do is upload your image and then it converts it into an SVG for you. So you might not be able to have access to Illustrator or you might not know how to convert into an SVG. So pretty much an automated website and it costs you absolutely nothing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tab back into object mode, I'll come up to file, I'll come into import, and I'll import scalable vector graphics, which is SVG. I'll come to the desktop and I'll just load up the YouTube logo. Now it's pretty small to be honest, just kind of like my channel. <laughs> and I don't necessarily need the font. So I'm just going to quickly delete these. And I'm going to zoom in. Now, you can kind of see the way I'm getting this kind of render artifact, and that means that there's two layers essentially sitting flat on top of each other. It's Blender's kind of way of saying the topology is overlapping, but not to worry about this, I'm actually going to select both of these. I'll press S and I'll scale these right up. I'll press 7 on the keyboard to come up to the top view, and I'll just move this into the centre. Something like this. I'll then select the main object and on the right hand side I'll come to the object data properties 
and I'll drop down the geometry tab and I'll just do a slight extrude. Now I've got a funny feeling this is going to go big and it did. So I'm going to make it a really small value. I'll make it 0.0. .0 well, let's make it 1. Let's see what we get. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll press 1 on the keyboard to get in the side view and I'll press Z and I'll go into wireframe and I'll drop this down. Now it could probably do with being a little bit more extruded but I'll just scale this on the Z. So that'll do fine. And also keep in mind we've got the glass layer, so there is a little bit. I'll then select this layer, I'll press Z to go into solid, and I'll do the exact same. I'll go to object properties and I'll do extrude. Now this is going to be silly sizes again, that'll be fine. And I'll just pretty much repeat the exact same process. Now, do I be fancy and do a boolean cut? Nah, we'll just leave this kind of extruded out, something like this. It's going to save you, you can tell here it's too large, I'll press S to scale, not scale it here. And obviously, I need to move it back up. Now, what I could do here is I could probably add a slight bevel, but it's way too much, so let's go 0 0.001. And that means the light will catch it ever so slightly, and that'll be fine. I'm not going to bother with the triangle. And there we go, I have a YouTube play button. <laughs> So the next thing I need to do is I actually need to convert these into a mesh. So I'll go to Object, Convert, Mesh from Curve. And I'll do the exact same here. Convert, Mesh from Curve. And now they're a mesh. Now rather than moving both of these objects as separate objects, I'm going to select the two of them in the outliner. I'm going to press Ctrl and J and I'll join them and I'll make them one mesh. And I'll double click here just to rename it. And there we go, we have a YouTube play button. Now, now there's certain things we could do. We could take it into the sculpting and we could make it drip and all sorts. Let's add the glass button. Ah, problem. So now we need to quickly create materials and I'm just going to use basic ones here. I'll just come to the material panel on the right. I'll enable new and what I'll do here is I'll change the surface and I'll change this to a glass BSDF. Now we won't necessarily see anything until I go into the render view. Let's change the render engine to cycles just for a giggle. There we go, that's looking good already. And obviously I can select this object, add in a new material. Let's make it a kind of brown as a frame or as a frame black, I don't know. Let's make it a bright black frame. And if I'm really wanting to be fancy, I could start adding nodes and I could start adding PBR textures. And that's how you make a YouTube play button. Guys, thank you for the 10,000 subscribers. I cannot convey how much it means. If you've not hit that button, hit it now. Well, make sure you like the video, comment, share. Yeah, you know what to do. Take care.